Brother John, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to be able to come before you as brothers and sisters and to be able to give thanks for all those things that you've made possible in our lives today. We ask Heavenly Father, you be with those brothers and sisters that are going through difficult and hard times and especially those who are extremely sick that you give them the guidance and understanding that they need during this time and be with them, Father, and heal them that be thy will and provide for them the best treatment that man has to offer. We ask, Father, you forgive us of any transgressions that we may along the way have committed against you and remember against those no more. We thank you, Father, for your son above all things that who gave the ultimate sacrifice on Calvary for the sins of mankind. And we must always remember, Father, that through the shedding of his blood, we now have remission of sins. We ask, Father, that you be with those in Washington that's going through a difficult time right now and trying to decide who will be our next commander in chief. And may he, whoever it may be, Father, be given the inspiration and the knowledge to carry on thy word according to thy word. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Brother Calvin mentioned to me Sunday that he thought it'd be a good idea on Wednesday night just to pick a book from the Bible and just do it on our own without using a, a guide like we had this time. If that's all right with everybody, somebody think of the book, and that's what we'll go into. We just finished, we're finished four gospels, and we're just getting ready to. We yeah. finished up the book of Acts. Do and what? We can go to any book we want to. Nine degrees out. Who is that talking? DJ. That sound like Calvin. No, it's DJ. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, does anybody have a book idea they can think of? <laughs> not oh. think about it and we maybe we can discuss it Sunday. That way I can start working I, I, I on a book for the book of Revelations. The book of Revelation. Yeah. Yep. We just finished the what? book of Revelation. Yeah, we've done that not too long ago, didn't we? Yeah, we've done it in the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. I must have missed it then. Yeah, we went through the whole book of Revelation lately. Okay. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, that might have been the last one we done before we got into the uh, Book of Acts. I'm not sure. That's a good book. Okay. Think about it, and we'll discuss yeah. that Sunday. Yeah. Okay. We're in the Book of Matthew, chapter 27, Mark 15, Luke 23, and John 19. And during, we're going to look at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. There could be a lot of side talk on this because we got uh, a lot of events that could be discussed further than different than what the, this right here does. So anything that you have that you come up with that you'd like to look at, we can do that. Question number 20 says, what was done with the garments of Jesus? Well, they were parted out. They gave to people. Yeah. Okay. They parted them out and cast lots. Now, <coughs> If I if I remember reading right, they they parted his clothing, but when it come to his overcoat, they didn't want to tear it up, and that's when they cast lots to get who got that uh, coat. Just for it's called a vesture here, uh, and upon my vesture they did cast lots. That would have been his overcoat, and they didn't want to tear it up because it was a good material. But if they tore it up, then that'd be just like throwing it away, and they all wanted their share of it. So they cast lots to see who would get it. Well, wasn't that a prophecy? Yeah, that was yeah. prophesied. Yes, it was. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't remember exactly where it prophesied that, but it mentions it in the New Testament, but I don't remember when. Yeah, I don't either. I, I remember that, but I don't know where it's at. <laughs> get Christina back in there. Get Christine back in there. Uh, 
Okay, verse no, question number 21. At what hour of the day did the crucifixion begin? The third. That nine o'clock, nine. Doyle's okay, Mark. Doyle's Mark 1525. Somebody said it there. Mark 1525 said it was the third hour of the day and they crucified yeah. him. Then he goes on to say uh, what sign was placed on the cross of Jesus. Basically, all four books mention that sign. And it's mentioned a little bit different in each one of them, not meaning that any is right and any is wrong. Sometimes you have a different perspective than others. Matthew says uh, Jesus, the king of the Jews, or Calvin. Mark says it was written King of the Jews. Uh, the King of the Jews, the same thing. Luke says this is the King of the Jews. And John says it a little different, saying Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. But the emphasis is all on the King of the Jews. So they're all saying the same thing. Uh, basically. Any thoughts or comments? Was it wrote in different languages too, or did they have different? It was written in three languages. I, I think that's one of the questions. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, okay. I don't know if that's the next question. I, I'm not seeing like I, I read that, but it was written in uh, what? Hebrew, Greek, and an Arabic language? Aramaic. Yeah. I think that's what it was. It also tells us here that Pilate's responsible for doing it. But don't you think they were making fun of him? That's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, this was Pilate doing it. So, really, when you think about it, I don't know if it's making fun of him or not. It may have been, and I'm not going to say it wasn't, but. Uh, it, it says it was an accusation. In other words, people saying that he was accused of it. And then it says down here that Pilate wrote it. Uh, but you remember Pilate's wife told him not to have anything to do with this strike, this man. And also Pilate made the statement, I find nothing wrong with this man. So I, I don't know, it could be that. Any other thoughts or comments? It makes you wonder why someone who's publicly said he could find no fault was so eager to crucify him. Well, one of the big reasons Pilate done that, John, was because he wanted to get this over with. Because if there was too much uproar in Jerusalem, he could lose his head over it. Yeah. He wanted to satisfy the crowd. So he didn't want to keep it going on. The sooner he could get it over with, the better off it was. Wasn't there rumors too that uh, uh, that uh, Caesar may have been coming to where he was at? So I've never heard that, but it could could have been. I don't know if it was in the Bible. If I read that somewhere else or not. Yeah, it might have been a movie. I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody else know? Hear anything about that? Are you there, Calvin? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I, I kind of got. Come up yet. Yeah, I got kind of messed up on getting my computer up. Okay, you're you're fine. Number twenty-two. What were the actions of those who passed by the cross of Jesus? They made fun of him. They made fun of him. Okay. They reviled him. They wagged their heads, and they made fun of him by talking about, you destroyed the temple and built it up in three days. Uh, the chief priest and the scribes, what the hell, how did they act? Uh, well, they mocked him. And okay. And told him to come down off the cross. Then he could raise the chief priest, the people down and re 
And this is really what all of them were doing, basically. Yeah. And then what about the robbers on the cross? One of them mocked him and the other one corrected the, other, the, the one that mocked him. Well, I think they both mocked him at first, didn't they? I don't recall that. Uh, well, look at verse 44. It says the thieves, at both of them, were crucified with him and cast the same in his teeth. It says his teeth, but it says thieves. Yeah, and that's, I need to, I need to look at that somewhere else too. Cause that, you know, that, that never struck me uh, in my mind. I, I was thinking that both of them did it to start with and the one repented. They may have, I, what, but what sticks in my mind was the fact that one did and the other one uh, corrected him. Uh, so it, it's got to be true. It's written there. Yeah. I think both says, of them did it first, and then the one repented of what he did and realizing what he was saying. But then, like you said, it says in his teeth. So I, but yeah, I know it's each deep. one of them, that, that would have been just each one individually did it in his teeth. Yeah. If anybody sees anything or knows anything on that, holler at it. Any other thoughts? I'm going to take a quick look here. Well, go ahead. Verse 23, question 23. You can keep up with that too, can't you, Calvin? Yeah. Question 23. What did Jesus do when he saw Mary, his mother, standing by the cross? He says, woman, behold thy son. Just a minute, my, my thing's messing up here on me. Okay. What did he mean by what he was saying here? Now, now they're stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, uh, and his mother's sister, Mary, <laughs> the wife of Cephalus, Cephalus, and Mary Magdalene. Now, his mother's name was Mary. This and, mother, and Mary's sister. We don't know Mary's sister's name. Some people say that they don't take, miss the comma there, and they think that Mary had a sister named Mary, and that's not what it was. It's Mary the wife of Cephalus and Mary Magdalene. Uh, it says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, that's important, he said unto his mother, behold, woman, behold thy son. Then said the disciple, to the disciple, behold thy mother. Is he in a way here asking that disciple to take care of his mother? Yeah. Okay, I did it again. What do you all think about that? You had to go back to the original Greek and see exactly what the emphasis was on what. You know, it's interesting the way he said it there, though. And he said, Mother, behold thy son. And then he said, Disciple, behold thy mother. Now, what disciple is that? You have to go back in there. I think it's John, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know that it says anywhere, but I think that's what the indication is. Because John is the writer of this. Uh, has anybody seen anything on that or have an idea? The world is sent down by John 19, verses 26, 27. <laughs> I've got myself in the same place on this. Yeah, I'm hearing talking, but I can't hear, hear well enough to tell the answer. Hey, uh, Elias, uh, John 19, 27. John 19, 27, Doris is talking about it. What's the rest of that verse say? I haven't got it with me. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. Okay. So it sounds like that's what Jesus was indicating. 
Yeah. For him to take care of his mother for him. Right. You okay in there? Mom's 23. No, it's Alan, did you find anything yet? Okay, if, if we look, if we look over in Luke 23, uh, verses 39 through 42, it, it says more than, uh, than uh, Matthew 27, 35 does, and in, in that it says, and one of the male factors which, which were hanged railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, dost not thou fear God? I remember seeing that. that. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly for, of course, we know that. But the, the question was, and, and that's where I focused on. I do have in my notes that it does say, cast the same in his teeth. So I, you know, I really don't know how to take that yet. And it may have started out that he was, uh, that he was mocking him. Okay. But Luke says it a little different. Yeah. But it makes you wonder why he would start off mocking him and all of a sudden have a change of heart. People have a change of heart, though, don't they? Well, that's yeah. repentance. Yeah. <clears throat> and Jesus did say, did, Jesus did say that, uh, that he'd be with him in paradise. Yep. Number 24, what happened at the sixth hour or about the sixth hour? Dark. Darkness. Yep. The ninth hour. Okay, now, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over the ninth until the ninth hour. So from mm -hmm. the sixth hour, sometime during the sixth hour through the ninth hour, there was darkness. And that sixth hour, what time of day would that be? Uh, noon, 12 o'clock. About noon, I think, yeah. About noon. It, well, actually, actually, it, it's an hour, so it would be between our time. It would be, be between 11 and 12. Yeah. Or would it be between 12 and 1? No, if you start out 6 and 7, that's, that's 1. 7 to 8 is 2. 8 to 9 is 3. 9 to 10 is 4. Uh, 10 to 11 is 5, and 11 to 12 is 6. Okay, that sounds good. So it's during the 6th hour, uh, sometime between 11 and 12, and it continued till till the ninth hour for three that's, hours. That's, that's where a lot of people get confused when it said is uh, uh, when Peter was speaking on the day of Pentecost when it said it was about the third hour of the day. Yeah, well, see, that's that, important the way it's put in there. Yeah. Simply because they're not giving you an exact time. And the thing they couldn't give you an exact time because they That's didn't right. have watches and clocks. They had to go yeah. by the sun. So they're saying sometime during the sixth hour this took place. Yeah. And and it could be well the thing about it is when it says the uh, about the third hour or about now when it says it was from the sixth hour here, that's exactly what it meant. It was in the sixth hour. But if yeah. but if you say about then you're saying, well, it's somewhere close there. So it could have yeah. been, it could have been the, uh, um, the or the fifth hour. It could have been the seventh, but it was about. It could have been anywhere close there. Yeah, but it could when have been it's close to twelve o'clock. But when it says yeah. now from the sixth hour, it's talking from the sixth hour on. Yeah, it was sometimes started in the sixth hour. Yeah. Okay, how do we know six o'clock is the first hour? Oh, that was considered daybreak. That was the start of the day. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, the you, Jewish calendar, that was the start of the day. Yeah, you got you to gotta go into the 12 hours of day and the 12 hours of night. And, and of, course, of course, whenever you're going through the different seasons, those, those days are going to be a little shorter in the, in the wintertime. They're going to be a little longer in the, night, or in the, in the winter. Yeah. But they longer pretty well in the started. I, I got myself confused. Uh, but no matter but, what time of day it was, they didn't have the clock that went forward and went backward like we do. 
Now, uh, did they have sundials then? They're, they're six o'clock with six o'clock year round. Yeah. So sometimes it might be dark when the day started, and sometimes it might have been daylight two hours before the day started. Yeah, and according according to the how close they were to the equator, you know, that that's what determines how long the days are or not. But that's right. It's you you got to go by a twelve hour day and a twelve hour night. What did Jesus do at the ninth hour? He said, "My God, why has Thou forsaken me?" Yeah, I can't pronounce that either. Eli, Eli. Lama Sabachthan or something like that. You're close. And then when it's translated by my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Uh, why Why would he have made that such a statement? Well, he was suffering. He was human. Because he took on the sins of the world. And God could not look up on that sin. Right. So he, he, he didn't abandon him, but he forsook him. He couldn't. He didn't uh, keep him from that. Look what it says on over. What was the reaction of, of, of the people to this? I already put it up there, but they, they some thought he'd call on Eli. Yeah, he was. Yeah. That's, that's Isaiah. I think I know it. Who is that? Elias. Elijah. Yeah. Uh, and straight Elias. away. It's Mark, it's and they, they thought he might have been calling for him to come and save him, and which we know he was not. Any thoughts? There's, it asks you about a lot of those statements on the cross, and I just copied this off the internet. I don't even remember where I got it from, uh, somewhere on uh, YouTube or no, it wouldn't be in YouTube, just the images. And this lists the seven things that Jesus said from the cross. And in some situations, it gives you the prophecy of it and so forth. Uh, this is a good one to have just a, just a reference to for yourself. I can get a copy of that for anybody that wants it. But it seems to be a pretty good one to me. Now, what happened when Jesus died? Uh, it's dark. The wall, yeah. the tabernacle was rent in two. Yeah. Hey, there was a lot happened, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. Uh, can you all see that whole screen, or does your pictures cut no. it off? No. no I'm cut it off. Do they cut it off a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Well, what you probably try to work cut, on that. If it's cutting it off, you need to you need to make your screen smaller. Because it's got a full screen with space, with the spaces to. Uh, of course, I'm running a 23 inch monitor too. So, well, what I might try to do is to start cutting it off right here. I can get an estimate of where it's at and start putting it all over here and make it a little taller. But uh, that way, all of it will be up there. Well, it says Jesus Christ was a loud voice. Uh, it says the temple uh, was the veil of the temple was rent. Twain, what's Twain mean? Two. 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 Renting two. Uh, and from the top to the bottom, what was significant about that? Separate the new law. Could any yeah, man have tore it from the top to the bottom? Yeah, it, it was pretty tall. You, you'd have to it'd be hard to tear it from no top to bottom. No way you could rent it from the top to bottom. It was just, yeah, uh, what was it, 20 feet high? Yeah, it was pretty good. We, we went over that, and I forget now what. Yeah. Uh, but it couldn't have been rent from top to bottom uh, no. by, by man. It had to be by God. So there was an earthquake, and the rocks rent. What's it meant by rent? Rent, the term used for torn or tear. Yeah, how you think about rocks being broken in two like that. <laughs> Is what it's indicating. The graves were open, bodies of the saints came out, uh, and the centurion said that they were with him watching Jesus, uh, saw the earthquake and those things that were done. They feared greatly, saying, This was the Son of God. 
truly this was the Son of God. Did that save them? No. 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 They, 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 it was a repentance, but I don't know. I don't know if it's a repentance, but it's kind of indicating that. And uh, they have to do a whole lot more in order to be have their sins forgiven. It was an acknowledgement. It wasn't necessarily repentance. No. And this really wasn't calling on the name of the Lord, what some people would try to indicate. No. They were just making a statement. Thoughts or comments? back to 27 okay and there again uh the question what conclusion did the centurion who had been in charge of them reach and of course i i already said it there uh, and i don't know i don't know if this is significant or not but but what the centurion said this was the son of god yeah uh, now, that didn't that didn't change the fact that that is the son of god that's right. Well, I'm I'm concerned about this part starting in, in uh, uh, verse number 52, and the graves were open, and many yep. bodies of the saints, saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Yep. That would have been kind of scary. Yeah, it would have. But how could that have happened, though? That, that had to happen because of God. Yeah. But now, it would appear that they, when they resurrected, they were in physical form. It must have been. And they appeared unto many. Right. I don't know if they lived and died at another time or how this went about. Yeah, we don't have any detail on that. Uh, we don't have enough detail. Any anything we would assume would be would be too much. God handled it. Either way. It. Yeah, God handled it. We what what happened? What happened to the body of Jesus? See, we're not told that. God took care of it. I know he I know he he has a new body like that. We we will have that same kind of body. But the the fleshly body it didn't see destruction, so what happened to it? God took care of it. Any any man that in the Old Testament, one of those men that didn't die, God took care of that. And we we can't determine, we can't come out and say for sure what happened. No, that's right. That, that's a, so we have to be careful. We we can discuss that and we can think about things, but to yeah. teach something as a definite thing is a different. We can have thoughts and ideas on it, but don't try to preach it for truth. Yes, that's, that's absolutely one, right. Another one of the great puzzles of the Bible. Now, here, again, in verse 54 of uh, Matthew 27, uh, it says, now when the centurion, that was the head of the group, yep. and they were with him uh, watching Jesus, they said, saying, truly this was the son of god yep now in luke 23 and 47 about the same thing it says now when the centurion saw what was done he glory he glorified god saying certainly this was a righteous man uh he may have said both statements he may have and since luke heard one and matthew heard another one and we have to understand well luke didn't hear one he wasn't there but uh, Luke, Luke, that's what Luke was told was said. So I would say that the man said both things. It's the only conclusion I could come to on that. Now, okay, look, look uh, just before that, uh, where it says, truly, this was the Son of God. It says, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. So it may have been more than one made the statement. Yeah. Okay, 28. How did the soldiers make sure that, that uh, the ones being crucified were dead? They broke their leg. Broke their leg. Okay. It was the custom that they'd go out and break their legs to make sure that they were died, that they died. Uh, why did they not do, do, that, do it to Jesus? Okay, does that fulfill any prophecy? Yeah, because yeah. they said no bones would be broken. 
No, okay, not. but not a bone would be broken. <laughs> so when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead. Uh, what did they do instead? Here's the sad. Okay, one of the soldiers, but one of the soldiers with a with a spear pierced his side. What's the significance of blood and water? No. <laughs> it separates at death. Yes, it does. So in order to get back, we have to unite it back to watery baptism. Yep. That's how we get in touch with the blood. It goes on to say, uh, uh, what does that illustrate? And uh, uh, we just mentioned that. It says, and 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 a bone, a bone of his shall not be broken. That yes. was a, a thing. Yeah. And now they there's, shall uh, look at him and they appear. There's people that will try to argue with you at uh, that. When, when the Bible does say that his body was broken, it was. Broken yeah, but down, bones. And, but the bones weren't broken. That's right. Um, one, one other thing I wanted to mention, I had a discussion with a fellow one time, and, I, and I'm not sure who it was. But we got to talking about, okay, I got to look at it to see now, uh, about uh, repentance and death and baptism. And the the thought come up and, and I mentioned it to, to the individual that I was talking with and said, well, Jesus was dead because there was an argument here that, again, we've talked about this some, uh, about, uh, uh, about a person that repents and then he's baptized. Well, they're teaching that re repentance is in baptism. I said, well, Jesus died on the cross before he was buried. And the fellow, whoever it was, looked at me and asked me, he said, how do you know he was dead? <laughs> now, I, now you're talking about somebody that's supposed to be a Christian. I remember that, but I, okay. I don't remember who it was and I wish I could. Man, that's a loaded question. Well, the how do you know? I said, the that. Bible states it. I said, the Bible states it and why would you bury somebody that's alive? Yeah, because it says he gave up. That's right. So you there's there's different time. things, there's different things that you can you can fight those people with, but will they listen? That's and then, uh, like Doyle has said, didn't it say that he also uh, that he gave up the ghost? Yeah. Yes. Well, most most people really, and you all know this as well as I do. Most people don't really know what the Bible says; they know what their pastor tells them. Yeah. I just went through a bunch of that with my daughter-in-law earlier. Uh, yesterday, so, unfortunately, it makes it hard. Uh, a lot of times, you show somebody a scripture, and they'll say, "I didn't know that was in the Bible." Well, I showed her some. Now, as a matter of fact, my daughter-in-law thought when I said we got to talking about baptism, and she she thought John John the Baptist's baptism, John's baptism was still valid. And I had to show her, and and I said, "Read it right here. It is read it." And she said, "Huh?" She said, "I've learned something." So I, now, I, you think I, about that. I still, I still say people, I still have people say that they want to die like the thief on the cross because he wasn't baptized. <laughs> and I just shake my head. How do you know he wasn't baptized by John? Well, that's the whole idea. They make yeah. statements that he wasn't. I said, well, how you do? The Bible never says so one way or the other. Because John's baptism. Well, right. He very before, well could have been Jesus. because... We know that John the Baptist was baptizing in Jordan during that time. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that the thief on the cross was baptized. Don't mean he wasn't. Don't That's mean the he thing. wasn't. We don't know. Yeah, but, but he died under a the, 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 the big point. Right. The big point of that is it don't make a difference. Right. No. Like Dorla said, he died under yeah. a covenant. And, and, that, no and that covenant, John the Baptist's baptism was valid until Jesus established yeah. the church. Exactly. Have we lost Richard? Oh, no, no I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I he, hadn't heard you for a while. He, oh, he's yeah. on light. Yeah. But Jesus appeared, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. He, they didn't recognize him, you know, so. He, yeah, originally, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, 
he he appeared in a different one place that said he appeared in a different form and they didn't recognize him. Yep. It might have been the uh two that were walking on that uh EMAS or E M M A S. It was all over here. EMAS or something. Yeah, yeah, it's uh but I remember they said he was you know, he he had a different form at the front ten, but so but also when whenever the Lord comes back that the ones that are living will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. You can't you know, flesh and blood can't inherit heaven, so you know, you'll be be changed to a different spiritual body. Yeah, spiritual body, yeah. And it'll be like that of his. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's all I know. <laughs> We I think we cover that in the next next unit. Yeah, it is. Oh, yep. About the appearances yeah. of Jesus. Yeah, we do. Uh, verse number twenty nine. Who buried the dead body of Jesus? Joseph. The uh, rich man of Armathia named yes. Joseph. Well, I have. Yeah. Joseph. Okay. There was actually there was actually two. Okay, it tells us in John. You're right. You're right, uh, Calvin. Yeah. And it tells us in John nine forty. Yeah. That they took the body of Jesus, and it says in verse forty one that uh, uh, Nicodemus. Uh, I can't read that. I've not got that. Let's see. I don't have. Uh, then took the body of Jesus and wound it in clothing uh, with the spice. And the manner of the Jews was, what's verse 41 say to start with there? I can't see it. Now in the place where he was crucified. Back up to verse 38. Well, it mentions both Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. Yep. They were both a party to that. Uh, I don't know why I've not got the rest of the answer there. Well, I've got it if you want me to read it. Go ahead. I'll just go ahead and read the whole thing. Uh, then took they the body of Jesus and uh, wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, uh, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid there laid they Jesus, therefore, uh, because of the Jews' preparation day for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. Yeah, but Joseph was also a disciple of Jesus, too. You know that? Actually, Joseph himself hewed that rock out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't put down, I should have verse 38. Yeah, that's what I put down. It says, and after this, Joseph of Arimathea, yeah. being disciple of Jesus, put secretly, fear, secretly for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate, that he might take the body of Jesus and Pilate gave it gave him leave. Yep. And then in verse continuing in verse thirty eight it says he came therefore and took the body of Jesus and there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of mirth and aloe, aloes, uh, about a hundred pound weight. So they were both responsible for burying Jesus Christ. Yeah. And in verse forty it says and they took the body. So it was day, the two of them. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking at Matthew 27, 16. It doesn't. It only mentions Joseph. It doesn't mention anybody else. Well, I was I'm in John 19. Yeah. And verse 60 is the one that said it tells you that Joseph uh, had hewn out in the rock. Yeah. So I Matthew 27, 60 says the same thing. It says that he hewned out the rock. So that, that made me think, you know, all along for, for, I don't know, sometime, for some reason, I always thought that you could walk into that tomb. I don't think so now. Well, you know, you know it says Mary Magdalene, when she went up or bent over and peered in or looked in. Yeah. I'm not sure how big it was. I don't think it would have been overly big because it was it was Joseph's own tomb. 
I'd say they almost had to lay the the uh, ever what they had him on, laid it down and drug it in there almost. Yeah, drug him or pushed him in. Yeah. Because they put a rock in front of it, yeah. and uh, if they put a large stone in front of it, they it had to be small enough so they could move it. And I think the reason that I've always thought that is because of pictures I've seen. Me too. Yeah. Pictures have a tendency to destroy our true image of Christ. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, if you look at 99% of the pictures of Jesus Christ, he's a white man. Yeah. I think white people done all that drawing. Well, I had a, I had a black man. I had a black man ask me one time, and he told me he'd talk to all kinds of people. This is Dr. Plank. Asked me one time, he said, where black people come from? And I talked to him, and he looked at me and told me, he said, you're the only one that I've talked to. It makes any sense. Because I took him back to the Tower of Babel. Yeah. <laughs> Black people come from the same place all of us did. Everybody. And I, I looked at him and told him, I said, I can't tell you where white people come from. I said, I don't know the uh, the tone or color of uh, Adam and Eve's skin. I'm not white. Listen, now you, you see the sun, what the sun's done to me. Well, I'm, there was I'm brown. There were six people. The three sons of, of Noah and their yep. wives. Yep. And every bit of the DNA we have today comes from them six comes people. Comes from them. Their DNA is is from back, but we can't trace it. You mean seven, don't you? No. No, there was eight. Eight. Oh, eight. Eight so Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know where I got seven. <laughs> Question Probably 30. Left. Probably Ask how was the tomb of Jesus secured? Okay. And why was it secured in such a way? Going to make sure the hold it. Okay. Yeah, there was there was a stone rolled in front of it, and and it was and it was sealed. Yes, sir. Because, because they were afraid, and they put a, a guard in front of it because they were afraid that uh, uh, Jesus' disciples would steal his body. Exactly. Look how much detail they went to. So they, verse 66. So they went and made the scepter sure, sealing the stone, and setting the watch. Yep. They did everything they could to make sure that nothing happened. Yep. And they were so afraid that they were going to steal the body and and say that he had risen. But what made them think that that was going to occur? <laughs> well, they had to do it by the third day. Yep. Yeah. Because that's what he said he'd be gone the third day, and so they were going to try to make sure it didn't happen. Then, we're ready to our life lesson. Go ahead. No, I just said it didn't work, did it? <laughs> no, no, no. There's nothing can contain him. Yeah. Well, I, uh, we'll I, try I, to get I, a few I, of these. Yeah. I didn't I'm sorry, go ahead. Them. So. Where did I go? I can't see me. I see my name, but I can't see me anymore. I can't see Calvin. I did a while ago, but I, for some reason it just Have you got your up. video on, Calvin? Check I, your video. Yeah, I saw me a while ago. I've not touched it, but let me check it. I just see your name, Calvin. So I uh, see. Calvin, it looks like you got your video. There you go, Calvin. Neither. You're back up, Calvin. Well, no, I can't see me, though. Not me. No, no, I, I, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm for some I'm reason. I'm ahead of Dai Ling. For some oh, reason, I've looked up. Right. I've looked up, and for some reason, my camera is turned off. I didn't touch it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't uh... <laughs> now somebody. Yeah, all I see, we, all I see is his name across. Somebody it. fess up. They did it. <laughs> can you see the screen we've got that we're on? Yeah, I can see. I can fine. see you all. When you talk, we know who you are. Yeah, I'm gonna. Take a quick look right here and see what I can do. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It said, why did the women come to the tomb of Jesus? Uh, Jesus, 
to anoint the body. Yeah, there it is. It was turned off. <laughs> and when the, uh, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and the mother of James and Salome uh, had brought sweet spices uh, that they might come and anoint him. Yep. So that's why the women came. Second part of the question, what did they see when they arrived? He was gone. They saw a man they thought was the gardener. Okay, I got it. They saw the stone was rolled back. Yeah. Empty tongue. I had that on there. I know I did, but it's gone. The stone was gone. The stone Who was spoke gone. to the women? An angel. An angel. Okay. Actually, it says a man, but it was an angel. Yeah. A young man. A young man. Uh, they didn't yeah. know that it was an angel. Okay, it goes on to say, well, what were they told had happened? He's risen. Uh, okay. Since yeah, you're not, I, I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen. And it goes on to say, what were they told to do? Go to tell some, the city. disciples and Peter. Yeah, tell everybody else. Yeah. yeah. He, he was going to be in Galilee, I think. Okay. There you go. They said, come yeah, see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell the others he is risen from dead and behold, he'll meet them in Galilee. So. Yeah. Now we're going to look at the appearances of Jesus. Some of these, I think, are a little bit, they're close, but you've got to uh, move a couple of them around just a little bit. Uh, first of all, it says, whom did Jesus appear to in his, after his resurrection? Mary Magdalene. Who did he first appear to? Mary Magdalene. Yeah. Okay. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. That's, there's no question that we should have about that one. Now, it says describe that meeting. I just put the whole of John 20, 11 through 18 down. Yeah. I mean, because well, other than that, you don't have anything. 11 through 13. I put down Murray Magdalene when she ran and told Simon Peter. Did we all get that and read that? You know, uh, 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 I have a question. Y'all y'all shot past it real quick. But there was two angels at the grave site. Seems like I remember yeah. there were two. Yeah. There there was, but I think she only the way this is written, it appears that what happened, she when she looked in, she only saw one. And then the other one was still was there. That's the one spoke to her. That was according yeah. to Luke 24 5, somewhere in that area. Well, it said okay. it one at the head and one at the feet. Well, I say well Matthew had one, a different one. Was, one was sitting on the stone, wasn't it? Like, like yeah. Was the one was on the right side on a stone, and I think that was Matthew. But I, Matthew I said that, that, only, that the angel answered. Uh, and that might have been the only one she talked to. No, Luke, yeah. Luke uh, said that one of the angels made the, this unusual comment, why seek ye the living among the dead? Yeah. I'd say there's one angel in the tomb and one was in the garden. Oh, yeah. they, they, she thought Mary Magdalene thought it was a gardener then. And it goes on in Luke 24, 6, he is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoken to you when uh, he was yet in Galilee? Or Galilee? So we're looking at, at uh, Luke's viewpoint. Okay. Well, there could have been two angels. Uh, just she spoke to one and only one of them spoke to her and uh, there could have been another one there because the Bible mentions two. So. And I, I don't doubt that. And, and I think what it was initially really that, that she just saw the one at first and then later 
I like I think it was Luke that said uh, that it was two. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah, here, There's not a problem with that. Luke said like that twenty four well, four and it came to pass as they were yeah. much perplexed thereabouts, behold two men stood by them in shining garments. Well, I might tell Calvin, uh, I saw John down at Walmart the other day. Did that yeah. mean uh, Dorless wasn't with him? Right. Yeah. He could have been there uh, too. But in John 12, it says she saw two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet. It says she saw two angels. And I don't I'll doubt think. that, but I think he, I think she probably saw the, and it don't matter what I think, but I, but the way I look at but it. It's like this. Let's say that Sister Dorless, well, let's say Sister Dileen witnessed it. One was standing outside and one was inside the tomb. She would have said there was two angels. But if I seen it at a different angle and didn't see the one on the inside, I would have said, well, there was one angel. And again, so, like you like um, talking about, you've right. got two different viewpoints here. Exactly. Two different writings. Yeah. Yeah. That's like. Matthew mentioned one angel and the other books mentioned two. I, I put my answer for Matthew. Well, there's, uh, there's not really any problem with that. No. Uh, any of us may see something and see it one way, a person, another person, another way. That's why yeah. we've got four gospels. That's yeah. why we I put like, them all together so we can get the understanding from all of them. Yeah. yeah. But it asks the question, to whom did Jesus first appear? It was Mary. Then it says, describe that. The description goes from John chapter 20, 11 through 18. And, yep. and uh, Calvin, here's why I thought it might be a smaller tomb. Yeah, Look me too. 11. It says, but Mary stood without the scepter weeping, and she yep. stooped down and looked into the scepter. Yeah. And, and so from it wasn't that tall view, enough where she could stand up and look in. And from bending over and looking in right there, Yeah. Uh, maybe she could only see one, that, but there was two there. Yeah. Yeah. And seeing two angels, she saw one it says two. Yeah. And white mm -hmm. sitting on the head of the bed uh, where Jesus laid. Uh, and again, the whole thing. I, we've all read that. And it just don't give us the detail uh, to, to make sure that. But, but listen, the way I look at that, the, the way I read this and the way it was written, she saw one of them, but there was two there. Yeah. Then she saw the other one. Because it does say that she saw two. Yeah, it says in seeing two angels. But yeah. that, but still, if you go back, it says, and the angel spoke to her. I mean, only one spoke to her. Yeah. That doesn't mean there wasn't two angels. Right. So. Uh, we got that one. Let's go on to question four. To whom did Jesus make his second appearance after the resurrection? Mary. The disciple. It was Mary. Okay. Uh, think about this meeting. The women that was at the tomb, that should be T O M B. Yep. With Mary. That should be a capital M for Mary. I didn't see it right when I put it up there. <laughs> so. They were, what were they told to do? They were told to go into Galilee and tell the disciples. Yep. Yeah. Well, look at Matthew 28 and 29, and this is the second appearance of Jesus. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, uh, uh, Jesus met them, saying, all hell. And they came and held him, held him by his feet and worshiped him. And uh, this said, Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee. Uh, there shall there they shall see me. So they hadn't seen him yet. So this second appearance is actually the uh, the women again. It was Mary Magdalene, Mary the first time, and then all of them the second time. Thoughts or comments? We're almost finished. Let's try to finish this one more. Yes. Who advised the chief priest as to what had happened with the body of Jesus? 
soldiers. <laughs> soldiers. The ones that was on watch. Yeah. Actually. Soldiers, people on watch. Okay. The guards. They what was re them. what was their response when the guards reported that the body was grown gone? That someone had taken it. Didn't the guards, didn't the guards tell a big lie and say they were overrun or something? I was saying, uh, yeah. They bribed them. Yeah. yeah. They, they paid them off. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. What happens to a guard that loses what he's guarding? He loses his life. Yeah. Okay, he's look at the statement. His disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. If this comes to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. That's what they're telling them there. You lost it. You lost him, and don't worry about it. Uh, we'll take care of it. We'll make sure you're okay. But look at what it says at the end. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Everybody knew it anyhow. Everybody knew they lied and done that. Yeah. Now comes the most interesting one. I really wanted to get to this one tonight. Number six, to whom did Jesus make his third appearance after the resurrection? Simon. 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 Cleopas and Simon. Do what? Doris uh, and Simon. Simon. Cleopas and Simon. Okay, Simon. Where do you get that from? Luke 24, 34. Now we're going to read that yep. in just a minute. Okay. We're not going. To, we won't get to all of it tonight. Yeah, we will. We'll go ahead and do it. Right. Look at number seven. The fourth appearance was to the people on the road to East Amos. Yeah. Yeah. And the description of it is here: twenty-four, thirteen through thirty-five. And the Bible tells us to uh, describe the fourth post-resurrection. Well, they were walking and talking about Jesus, and as they were, Jesus come up beside of them, but their eyes did not recognize who he was. One of them's name was C-L-E-O-P-A-S. I have it underlined. Yeah, that's what I have. Cleopas. Cleopas. And they walked with Jesus, and Jesus talked with them, and they talked about Jesus Christ and all this, but they still didn't read it. They didn't recognize who he was. And he goes on down all the way down until they go in, they eat with him. And when he's eating with them, he gives thanks for the bread and, and uh, the food they were eating. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But look at verse 34. It's saying, saying, saying the Lord is risen indeed and appeared to Simon and hath appeared to Simon. So during the fourth one, we find out that he appeared to Simon but we have no details whatsoever about that appearance. This is the only mention of it, period. Did anybody remember that before they look, started looking for this? No, I never. I didn't. I didn't, I did. I didn't either. Time of day, that was easy. So we had, how many appearances were they of Jesus all together? After his resurrection? Eight. Eight. Yeah. Uh, Ten. 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 Well, this, our yeah. book here goes all the way up and mentions, uh, I think, ten. Ten. Yeah. Were there any, any after the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Well, he appeared to Paul, didn't he? Well, he appeared to Paul, so that makes at least, I mean, this year mentions 10, so that, that'll yeah. mean at least 11. Well, There's something I need everybody to do for next week's class. We're going to yes, stop sir. right there. There's one thing I need everybody to do. If you've got your book with you, look at the one that says the Great Commission. <laughs> Yeah, it 17. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Mark 16, 15 through 18, and Luke 24, 46 through 47. For next week, question number 17. Question number 17. 
for next week, I need everybody, and I've already done it, but I need everybody to find out where each one of these occurred. When Matthew talks about the Great uh, Commission, where, where were they at? When Mark talks about the Great Commission, where were they at? And when Luke talks about it, where were they at? It's a defining statement when we do this. Most people take those three scriptures out of context and assume that they're all at one location at one time. So what I, what I need everybody to do is try to find out where each one of those are at. And if you put them in context, you'll find that answer. And most people take them out of context, so they, they, they arrive at saying they all happen at the same time. And most people think that. So when you, when you go to study and on that question, that question, the Great Commission, you need to look at and try to find out why, where each of these occurred at so that we well, can see if there's a difference. It's my understanding the Great Commission only refers to one set of scriptures, and that's Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Well, not just look at who, what, where they occurred at, but who was there. Oh. So that's two, two questions we need to look at next week that this doesn't cover. Uh, where did each of these three occur, and who was there when that occurred? Can we get that? We'll try. And you can find it in the scriptures right there. Just go a little bit before it and a little bit after it, and you'll find the answer. It's not, it's not a, you don't have to go to some uh, commentary or something and find it. It's there. I don't have one, so I hope we don't. <laughs> okay, anybody got anything else for tonight before we close our Bible study? Uh, also, you might want to look at John 21, 15 through the end of the chapter there, uh, when it talks about Jesus asking Peter, do you love me? He does it three times. What's the significance? Think about those things. Okay, we got anything else? Well, uh, I, I was looking at Luke 23 and... 41. Uh, one, one, uh, uh, my camera's off again. They were on the cross, the two thieves and Jesus, and, know, and one thief it. said, it's We true. indeed no. justly, for we we received the due oh, reward of our deeds. This man hath done nothing amiss. So uh, he, he did repent, absolutely. Yeah. Did you find uh, anything? Did you find anything yeah. there where he uh, railed on Jesus? I think it said both of them did. Yeah, off. yeah, they both did. And then uh, uh, the 39th is one of the malefactors which were hanged, railed on him, saying, I may end up having I'll be the Christ and I hate save it. thyself. I but the other mm -hmm. answering rebuked him, saying, mm -hmm. Does not thou fear God, mm -hmm. seeing thou art in the same. Yeah. Condemnation. Slow it on. Get out. Yeah, he mentioned it earlier before that, uh, that they both railed on it. So. Yeah. But that one said that we, they just leave it off. We, we deserve the punishment we're getting, but Jesus hadn't done anything, you know. He hadn't he done anything deserve to deserve it. it. Yeah. That's what they, that one come to that conclusion. Yeah. He said he, he, he has done nothing amiss. So. Got it back. I don't know what's causing that to go off. I don't know either. I was sitting here and I've seen it go off, and I was, I was searching the. Uh, I turned my TV off and it took that off. Uh, well, I still got you. I have to remove you as a co-host, or uh, maybe. Yeah, mine went off uh, last week about uh, about seven o'clock. Yeah, Brother Richards went off and he come back on long enough for me to tell him bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that, but I don't know what. Did you turn them all on? No, they're all on. I'm talking to them here. I see them. Oh, just, 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 they, they can all see each other. That, that picture up there is not there anymore. My, my, little camera, my little camera light don't look right, so there's something causing causes mine to go off. I don't know why. Well, brother brother uh, Calvin's. Uh, 
Yeah. What we see right now on the screen is everybody talking. I don't see that. Well. That's okay. <clears throat> I see one person, whoever's talking is all I see. Mm, I see talking. everybody. Everybody to Richard. That is because oh, yeah. of the way you've got your speaker view up for a sec. See that? You can change the speaker view and change the how the way you see things. I never did hit that speaker view. I don't know what it does. Well, hit it up. Well, if you do the speaker view, it shows you the person that's doing the talking. Okay. On the main okay. screen. Well, I see whoever's talking almost full screen, but everybody else is over on the right hand of the screen. So I see yeah. everybody. That's, that's called the speaker view. Yeah, and I see everybody. Though. Yeah, you see everybody on the side, but the person that's doing the most talking. The other the one, the other one yeah. is the gallery view. Yeah. Now, as administrator, you have an option of going there and setting multiple views, but nobody ever said, "Well, I like to be on the top," so I left it just like it is. But there is other options. You can go in there and actually. Have everybody show up on the very yeah. top. That's where mine's at. Yours is on the top. Yeah. Mine's, mine's top. down the right side. I, I see everybody. I see three of you on the top and three of you on the bottom. But I guess everybody can put theirs where they want to. Everybody's, everybody has your own viewpoint option. You can change it according to what you like. Yep. Now, when Eli's puts it on the lessons, it goes to the right. Well, that's, that's, because, I, that's because I give him authorization to do so. See, the administrator or whoever logs in, I have to make Brother Elias the admin or co-host. So I make him the co-host right away, and that way he has full control, and everybody just sits back and listens. But Christine, how, did, how was your trip, Christine? Yeah. Good. It was a good trip. Unproductive, but still good. Good. Well, she said it was unproductive. Means she didn't find a house. No, I didn't find a house. Uh -oh. Okay. Well, has anybody thought about a book they want to go over? Go now we've done. We've done, We've done almost all the books of the of the New Testament, but uh, some of them's been a while. Yeah, I have. Well, let's try to think of something by month by Sunday. I'd like to have so I can go ahead and start working on something. I tell you, I I'll tell you an excellent subject. I believe we ought to get into. Now we know about the Holy Ghost in Acts two, and somewhere around verses three and four that fell upon the disciples. But was that the same Holy Ghost that Peter was talking about in Acts 2.38? Some say it was the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Some say it was not. Now, it cannot be the indwelling after a little research. It can't be the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. It had to be something entirely different. It can't be the miraculous end of it. And actually, well, it. it very possibly could be the apostles laying the hands on it and not the Holy Spirit themselves. Well, it would be the Holy Spirit through the apostles if exactly. that was the case. It wasn't, but, it wasn't occurring like it did in Acts 2, verse 3 and 4. No. It was, no. it was uh, what was happening when the apostles laid their hands. Because if you start researching that on, it's funny that the uh, uh, the Holy Ghost doesn't even show up again until uh, Acts 10. And we don't hear about it until I think it's Acts 10. It may have, it may have happened in Acts, Acts 6. I'm not sure. But now I've heard somebody dispute both cases. Yeah, but didn't we go over the book of Acts once? Yeah, but we never went over the Holy Ghost being specific. About well, we can do a we can do a book of the Bible, or we can do a, a subject study. We don't have to. We're not tied down to anything. Because I've had a lot of people tell me that the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, and some say that it was not. If you all want to do a study on the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, we can do that. 
and it's according to how detailed you want to go. No answer again. <laughs> All right, we can we can put this. Up. You think you can do, you can research it in a week's time, or should it take two weeks and come back and? Uh, well, we've got two weeks. Next week we'll still be on this Bible study. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it'll take at least one more week for this Bible study. I don't know much how much altogether, according to how much. I'd, we I'd really like to research it and get more information on. Uh, okay. How exactly what they what Peter was talking about? Are you talking about from the beginning, or are you talking about just in the New Testament? I'm I'm talking about from the day of Pentecost on. Well, what about during? To be, what about during Jesus' day? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why not well, include them all in the New Testament? Well, well, right. We know we know we have the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Well, not the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. We know in John in John the Baptist's baptism when he baptized Jesus, we had the heavens opening up, and actually God Himself brought the Holy Ghost and and presented it to His Son Christ. It says the Holy Ghost is ascended on Him. Right. Like it on his head. Yeah. Like okay. But then John well, also knew that there was one coming after me that would baptize you with water and with fire. No, would baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And I, even people, they even get uh, what what the fire because I've had people tell me, well, Jesus is going around. Baptizing people with fire, and that's what I want. I said, No, I don't think that's what you want. Well, if you'd like, we'll start preparing yourself for two weeks from now uh, for a study on the Holy Spirit. That's fine with me. As me and Doris, yeah. we can get it, gives us enough time to really get into that. That gives you yeah. a couple of weeks to do some reading and study on it. Uh, look up every time it occurs in the Bible the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. And what it's talking about. That sounds fine to me. Yeah. Okay, got anything else? Well, let's have a safe week. Be careful. Take care of yourself. Don't don't go out without your mask on. Try to practice, continue to practice that way because that's the only way we can continue to have our worship service. Uh Brother Calvin. Would you care to close us out with prayer? <clears throat> Once again, Heavenly Father, you've provided us with a, another opportunity to study from your word. We thank you for all the blessings uh, and help us as we continue on after uh, we close this session out that we would continue to think on the things that we've talked about here and that we would continue to look further into your word as we as we live here. Help us to be the example as uh, we should be, that we might be able to encourage those about us uh, also to look into your word and find the way that you set uh, that is the way to uh, eternal life. We thank you, Father, for Jesus and his love, his dying for us, his shedding of his blood, and it's in his holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye, everybody. Bye. I love you. Enjoy. Have a good week. Everybody be careful. Be Bye, Christine. Bye. I thought I left, but I guess I didn't. <laughs>